Hey, what's going on guys? So here we are in Oxford Street in central London, here with the team. <laughs> About to film another episode of The Motto. We're gonna be speaking to American footballer Jay Ajayi, AKA The J Train. Uh, we're going to be finding out what it's like to be hit hard every single day of his life in training. I mean, he's a Brit. He's from London. We're in London. It makes sense. So uh, we're also going to find out what it's like living in Miami and if his life is like a real life version of Ballers. So stay tuned, subscribe and give us a like. Let's do this. Jay, welcome, man. Thank you for having me. How you doing, I'm glad brother? to be here, man. So tell me, bro, uh, what brings you back to London? Um, you know, here on, on a little bit of vacation time, see my fam, uh, getting some training in as well. Nice, sounds like a good plan. Um, how does it feel to be back in London? It's always a great feeling to uh, come back home. Um, you know, uh, when I was growing up, I didn't really get to come back after I left. And so now being able to have the resources and the time, um, you know, I love coming back here and uh, being with all my fam. All right, so let's go right back to the beginning, like right back to the start of your journey. Where were you born? Hackney, yeah. Okay. Hackney uh, kid. Is that where you grew up? Uh, yeah, I grew up there, lived there for like three or four years. Um, moved outside of uh, London to Chadwell Heath for a few more years. Chadwell Heath. And then, that's, uh, that's almost Essex, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Essex area, yep. And then um, moved to Maryland uh, for my, to live with my cousins in, tech, in the, the States. Uh, live with my cousins for a year and then uh, right to Texas and that's where it kind of all began for me. So that, that transition from living in the UK to, to going to, to Texas, what was the reason behind that? How come you had to go? Um, at the time my dad was doing IT, uh, he had some job opportunities in the States. Um, I think he was always kind of intrigued by the opportunity there and just his interest was high and um, it, was, it was only me, my mum and my little brother at the time and me. So. Uh, it wasn't really that much to move over and we were still fairly young so um, you know they, I guess they just kind of jumped jumped in and uh, you know we kind of all everyone we were all in the states now so <laughs> and what was it like being like a young British kid in America in the US like being that the Brit kid <laughs> in the school like the I'm guessing you probably one yeah. of the only ones right yeah I was the only one I remember getting teased a lot uh, I mean, really I, I, I pronounced a lot of things wrong I spelled a lot of things wrong <laughs> Um, I kind of had to like scrap everything and learn a whole new thing, try and integrate. Yeah. So it took a little bit of time. Um, what age was this? What age was it? was like that? seven or eight. Once my family came over from the London to Texas and we all kind of joined up, then it was pretty much we're growing up now in the States. Awesome. And with regards to you and your relationship with football or American football mm -hmm. as we know it over here, how, what was, what was your, your first your first experience of, of American football? Yeah, um, so it was about maybe 2003 or four. One of my uh, my boys um, that uh, played, I guess, in this little uh, peewee league, we were coming back from school and I was always hanging around my friends um, and uh, he was going to his practice. He had his pads, I didn't really know what he was doing, but I just tagged along, of course, and basically I ended up going with him to the practice. Um, they mistook me for one of the kids on the team, and I ended up going into their practice, joining in. Um, Sick. Ended up like doing like the little warm up and stuff, and running faster than everyone, and being a quick kid. And they were like, "Let's see what he can do with the ball in his hands." And like that was kind of like my first actual like this is American football and I was kind of like natural at it and it took off from there. So what did they say when they realized that you were you, you were the Brit kid and you were actually better than most of the, you know, the US kids? It was it was kind of weird because it was, I had never played the game before. I never knew yeah. what it was. So it was almost like, wow, this kid's kind of got this natural ability for it. All these other kids may have known the sport, been playing together and it was just like, I just came boom right away and, and, and kind of got it. Did you play soccer or football, yeah. as we call it over here, before before you went across? Yeah, I played football um, all the way to my junior year. That was actually my first love. Um, what position? Know, I, what I position? was a striker, uh, striker uh, point yeah. forward, uh, as you would call it. <laughs> so I kind of stayed uh, back on the the uh, sweeper and made runs and all that and scored a lot of goals. What, go goal a game? Uh, goal every team? Yeah, <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely. I, um, that was my dream, though. and. 
you know, as I grew in, in Texas and everything, it was like uh, I had that dream and then the American dream, and they kind of like met ahead my junior year, and it was kind of like a decision to where I had to figure out what I really wanted to do, and I stuck with American football, and uh, here I am. When you made the, the choice to, you know, become an American football player, you thought to yourself, this is what I want to do. Um, did you have like a position in mind, like a like a certain? Did you want to be a quarterback? Did you want to be a wide receiver? What what was going through your mind at this moment? So funny enough, um, I always played running back my whole life since I started. I was a, I've been a running back. Uh, was that that's because all of you? Because you that, they, they put you there. Initially. That's all I knew. Like I mean, I was an active kid. I was always running around, playing tag, running away from people, uh, trying <laughs> to people. yeah, trying to not get tackled and stuff. <laughs> so like running back was the most like it was the most easy one to like for me to right. do because I always do that and then uh, like basically that's all I played but I remember like one camp like when I was growing up and my parents had paid for me to like learn the, the game even more and I ended up they were like pick your team pick your position and I've been playing running back for like maybe a couple of years I knew I'm not like anything else but I, instead of going to the running back line I went to the quarterback line <laughs> and I did the whole camp at quarterback just just to enjoy myself and, and stuff. So I basically wasted my parents' money that day. But, you know, um, yeah, I've played running back my whole life, like, since the, the beginning. And for all of our viewers and listeners that might not know what a running back is, just explain to us, obviously, like, apologies to all of our American fans and all of our yeah. NFL fans, but what is the role of a running back in the, in the NFL? Yeah, so basically the, the role of a running back, um, you know, you have, obviously have the quarterback who's the, the, the guy who, who gets the ball every play from underneath the center. Um, the running back is usually directly behind the, the quarterback or to the side, um, and our role is to run the ball. Um, yeah. we, the quarterback hands us the ball, and we run the the big guys up front, the linemen. They're usually trying to create lanes for us to run and try and get into the end zone, score points for our team. Uh, we are we we have to be able to catch the ball as well. We have to be able to block people. So we're like the Swiss Army knife. Yeah, of, we gotta of, be versatile, of, uh, right? Yeah, we gotta be very versatile to be able to stay on the field and, and uh, do good things for your team. So like, I always envisage kind of like the quarterback kind of faking to throw and then he kind of like puts it around the corner and yeah. then that's where you take over and yeah. you kind of just like ram road through. We're just trying to create a way, basically, <laughs> and not get tackled because once you got that ball, everyone's looking for you. So it basically kind of turns into a game of tag after that, you know, yeah, once yeah. you get the ball. So talk to me about college. You went to college. Where, where did you go? I went to Boise State University, yeah. It was oh. The Blue Field. The Blue Field. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not, yeah. So talk to me about that. What was that like? Um, Completely different than Texas. Um, new culture change. Uh, Idaho. So I don't know if the UK people are familiar with Idaho. It's a state it's near uh, Washington, the right. state up in the northwest uh, of the United States of America. And uh, it's like, yeah, it's a little town, a college town, no professional team. Uh, so the whole town comes out for the games. They all show support. Um, and it's, it's amazing, man. I enjoyed my time there. I was able to really just meet a lot of new people and learn a lot about myself. And that's really, I think, where I did a lot of maturing, um, you know, is at Boise State because I, you know, I made some mistakes and had to learn from those and uh, get through some adversity and, and, and just to make it to where I am. Like you spoke about the adversity. How did you kind of come out of that as like a, a better athlete, a better person, a better player? How did that work? For, how did that work out for you? Um, personally, I think it's because I leaned on you know my three Fs and like my faith, family, and friends. I have a really great support system, um, you know, and I, I keep my faith strong. And I think those three things were, the, were what like helped me like through tough times and through when I, I didn't know if I was gonna get through or make it all the way, and just staying uh, focused on that. And then just my just my drive I guess just knowing that what I wanted to do trying to do whatever it took to get there and so I think all of those things together like helped me throughout my journey. Talk to me about like college football because obviously over here you know if you're at college or if you're at university like if you're if you play for the college football team you maybe get like 20 30 people come to a game but like in the states college football is almost as big as as professional like NFL football right you sometimes got, like, bigger sometimes bigger yeah. it's crazy it's it's um because it's like the tradition of the fact that that's your school and now you have all these people that all these families that their parents have gone to the school and then they send their kids right. to the school and it's like generations of 
families that go to the school that support the team that put money into the school so they all come out and support and then you've got families of the players and it's just like this whole thing to where that's your team you bleed for that team you love it and it's just as important to you as like the NFL professional teams and that's why like college football is so fun as well because it's like you're still young but you're getting that admiration almost like you are a professional athlete and so um, it's a really exciting time and um, I enjoyed a lot of those moments. Is it like the way it's depicted in like the movies and the, the TV shows and stuff or like you know like the quarterback and like all the main players are going out the cheerleaders and like <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, I would probably feel like in some places yeah like um, the guys are kind of like the, the, the guys on the football team definitely like the big men on campus like you walk around uh, and you know everyone in the, the campus usually knows those guys because all the students go to the games right. and they're rallying for the right. for the team so it's like you see the athletes on campus like well there they go you know what I'm saying <laughs> there go the boys so I mean yeah it's, it, it's a it's a great feeling to be in college and like be a college athlete it's a big look now something I wanted to talk to you about was the draft pick um, right. it's something that um, it fascinates me um, tell me about the draft pick you know I love the guys in college leave and that's the next step trying to get into the NFL and so for me I got drafted by the Miami Dolphins I got uh, you know, lucky that I went to a nice weather, a nice location, <laughs> uh, solid young team, and, and now here I am today, and i um, definitely grateful for, for that decision that they did. Um, so what number were, were you when you were, were you drafted? Yes, yeah, so I was drafted in the uh, fifth fifth round. Okay. Um, you know, is, uh, that, is that nerve-wracking when you're sitting there kind of waiting? Because I'm guessing, like, you're kind of waiting to see where your life is going to be placed for right. the next few it, years, right? It's probably one of the most nerve-wracking um, you know, uh, days, kind of two, two, three days of my life really? because uh, you're just waiting and like you don't know where you're going to go, which city like that's you're going to start your life in, um, which team um, you've been hearing all these things, all these rumors. For me personally, it was kind of disappointing because I was rated pretty highly um, coming into the draft and um, my stock kind of fell off some rumors about um, you know, injuries and stuff like that. Right, okay. And so for me, it was kind of like, uh, I don't know what was going on. Like, why am I falling in the draft? Where did you kind of expect to kind of get drafted? Yeah, so I was told like a day two pick. So right. like the first round was all on day one. You know, there's a pos always possibility like late, but I was told like from second to third round, like that's where it was kind of in that range. It's tough to stomach, but at the end of the day, I got my name called, so I was grateful, I was blessed. And then at that point, I was like, you know what let's do what you got to do to you know show what show who you are yeah yeah so that, that do, was that. do you do you have faith in in the draft like the the system itself because i'm guessing it it stops the rich teams from getting too rich and the poor teams from getting too poor yeah i mean it's a necessary thing to have but at the end of the day too i think that there's some aspects of it that get blown out of proportion to where sometimes guys value the wrong things and guys miss out on key players and that's why you see guys that fall in the draft end up becoming superstars and, and, and gems and they're like they call them like these draft steals but the draft is you know there's more to it than just what you see on draft politics I'm yeah, guessing, there's, yeah. A lot, there's a lot more a lot to of politics. it um, what's the difference would you say now that you've, you've experienced both the biggest difference between college football and you know straight up top level NFL football oh it's a, it's a job like in the NFL that's, that's my job it's my career like this is what I do every day. In college, it was like, I would have practice in the morning, do all that stuff, but then right after that, I would have to come back to being a regular life of a student. Now, I know you guys wear pads and stuff, but surely it's gonna really hurt when you get hit. Does it hurt? Um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm cool. Like, I don't, I don't really <laughs> uh, feel any uh, hits too too much. Really? Uh, usually I try to, you know, dish out the hits. <laughs> so, uh, I try to always position my body to where I'm not taking too many big hits, and yeah. so. Like how how do you do that? Like, what's the? This doesn't mean just by the way of running, just taking glancing blows, making sure you position yourself, uh, use use your your arsenal and agility to to get away and and kind of not set yourself up to get killed out there, <laughs> basically. Yeah, for real, for real. <laughs> and it's for lack of better words. <laughs> Have you got a celebration? What do you do to kind of like show that you've like? You know, you've done well. Yeah, so um, when I score a touchdown, I do the J-Train celebration. <laughs> and that's kind of like me, um, you know, I crank my arm up and down like this, um, like I'm pulling the train horn. And uh, it's pretty dope because uh, they'll get the whole 
stadium to like play a loud train horn Sick. in the stadium. So it's like, uh, uh, like <laughs> everyone's in the crowd doing it and everything. Like it's a great feeling knowing that you know you made it into the end zone and scored a touchdown for the team. Talk to me about after games. So obviously over here in the, in the UK, um, the footballers, you know, the press don't get a, a look into yeah. go. They but they they can't go into the changing rooms over here. But but over there in in the US. You yeah. got you got you got journalists in the in the dressing rooms with their cameras and their microphones. Like, what's that like? Is there like some kind of? I don't like it. <laughs> to be honest, I couldn't. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. That's the rule. Is um, there like? A but set it's time? like as soon as you get dressed, like you you could just have finished the game. You're in your towel. You don't give, get no chance to breathe. And there's like ten reporters right there next to you. Like, I can't even get dressed. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Definitely, like, I like the way that they do it in the UK. Like, just wait. We'll yeah. do it outside. You get your time. And keep the, keep the locker room for the players because that's where it's supposed to be, you know? Yeah. So. Is, have they got, like, a... Is there, like, a set time that they have to wait until they come into the, into the dressing um, room? It's or? like a, the coach... We come in, coach gives his speech about the game. We all do our breakdown. If you won, you lost, whatever. And then, like, right after that, like, <laughs> there's a rush. They're in there. You know, if you look at... Uh, an interview with uh, a footballer from the UK, and you look, you compare it to an interview with, um, you know, a football player from the US. There seems to be like a, a, a markable difference. It seems like the the US interviews tend to be a little bit more, slightly better. Most of you guys have been to college, that kind. Yeah, of thing. because I mean, in the college game, uh, it's like you said, how big it is um, with all the. Um just the fanfare and everything. You do a lot of interviews in college if like you're a good player as well. Um, you'll probably like get some publicity in the media. And so you definitely get like uh, introduced to it at an earlier uh, time than maybe some of the guys over here. Yeah. Now Jay, talk to me about your accent. Your yeah, accent. It's, it's like it's, it's a wavy, it's, it's, wavy it's, thing. Yeah. That's a good way of describing yeah, it. It's, it's wavy because like you it's walked like in, half Texas, half, in, yeah, half yeah. English. When you walked in earlier, I was like, I was like, is Wait, he mean? sounds like straight straight uh, US right now. Yeah, no. And then you said hello to me and you uh, heard me talk and then you, it's almost like you switch back. Yeah, it's like, crazy. I do don't you, know. Do you it, feel like your accent's slipping away or you kind of hold um, you into it? You know, it's like, uh, like I said, it's mixed because, I mean, Texas has such a strong accent, right, yeah, yeah. of, um, you know, like slang and like a draw and everything. Right. So, like, when I first moved there, it was, it was kind of strong and then it got blended and then when I get to come back here, um, you know, my accent from over here kind of like just creeps back out, I guess. Yeah. They, I, I get a lot of... I mean, uh, do the girls like it, Jay? That's what I'm trying yeah, to ask you. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm using the accent all the time, basically, if that's what you want to hear. Yeah, I'm using the accent to get girls. No, I'm just <laughs> all right, so talk to me about root, your, your routine, your daily routine. What is Jay Ajayi's day like? Um, my daily routine, I mean, I train, I'll go gym, and then... Um, what are you, you know, pushing in the gym? What do you do in the gym? Uh, you know, usually the workout that they've set up, you know, okay. nice full body workout, try and get up a good sweat. And then, um, you know, I'll go probably hang out with my boys. We'll go out, maybe grab a good bite to eat at a nice place. Um, and then I'm usually chilling. I love catching a movie. It's just listening to music, just vibing at home. And then on game day, right. when it's like game time, you're in the changing room, you're getting ready, getting in the zone. What music do you listen to? What what gets what gets um, you going? Gets you pumped? Uh, I like listening to uh, like uh, MMG, like Rick Ross, Wale, Meek Mill, those guys. Yeah. Um, you know, those guys have a lot of good pump up music. Future. Um, I listen to some UK stuff as well. Some grime. Um, feeling the grime, yeah. Yeah, I, I've I've been listening to grime for a while now. Do you um, feeling? Yeah, I like um, Dave. Uh, Dave's big. Yeah, I've been listening to the J Hus album recently a lot as well. Now I've I've been lucky enough to meet you know a few people that have that live in Miami um, that are in the entertainment business. Pitbull is somebody that sticks out in my mind. Right. One of the nicest guys. Have you met you met Pitbull? I've not met him yet. You love him, right? Yeah. He's always going on about how amazing like Miami is like the entertainment capital, like the the party capital mm -hmm. of the world. He's like, forget Vegas, forget Ibiza. It's all about Miami. Yeah. What is it like? living in Miami and you know being able to party in Miami because I'm, I'm thinking like little Wayne <laughs> I'm thinking live on Sundays right. what's it like um yeah Miami's it's, it's crazy um it's mad like that's why to be honest I live actually close to Fort Lauderdale right. so it's a little bit like 45 minutes okay. to 30 minutes away and so I don't really get stuck in all that craziness that's good, but if, if you're not fully in right, it right, right. you can step out because I feel like 
that's the trap right there already, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So if I need to go enjoy myself or go out with my boys, um, do whatever, I can easily just get on the highway and, and, and get over there. But I feel like it's good for me, like, that I'm out the way, I'm in the suburbs, yeah. I can just, you know, chill, vibe, and then if I'm lo looking for some fun, you know, my, Miami never sleeps to me, so <laughs> I can easily, you know, go find some fun. Awesome. Um, now, if anybody follows you on uh, social media, they'll know that you're an Arsenal fan, right? Right, right, right. Um, talk to me about Arsenal, man. Are you happy with the, the state of the club at the moment? Are you happy with the manager? Obviously, you guys didn't make Champions League yeah, last yeah, year. Yeah. Liverpool did, though. Just saying. All right, just, just, all right, you're good. Just saying, just you're saying. Good, man. <laughs> but, How are you uh, feeling about Arsenal right now? I'm... I'm I'm hoping for a revolution for this year, you know what I'm saying? We ended the season on a slightly high note. I wouldn't consider it a high note when you're not in Champions League. <laughs> but that FA Cup did feel good to have in our possessions. Awesome, man. Well, listen, thanks for being part of the motto today. Uh, as you know, uh, a big part of what we do is all about giving back. Whether it's through like amazing stories like that you guys give to us, mm -hmm. whether it's like you know the money that we donate mm -hmm. to a charity of your choice through mm -hmm. our sponsors. So. Um, what what charity would you like to, us to donate the money to today? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a very grateful for you guys having me on the show. Um, and for me personally, I've, I'm working with the NFL UK and we're looking to donate to the local youth football programs here that are working with uh, just uh, show, showing the youth uh, how to play the game and really just instilling them those great qualities to help them along the way. And so uh, definitely feel like that's a, a great uh, spot to help. That's a big look. Is that quite important to you, like grassroots, getting people into the sport at an early age? Is that important? Uh, definitely important to me because I think uh, personally, when I started playing at, as a young kid, you know, is a lot of just things getting poured into it um, from uh, resources to just like the support. And, uh, you know, that really helped me grow my love for the game. And so um, over, over here, I think it would be great and it's, I'm already seeing you know the effects of it and it's just to even add on to that and hopefully we can keep getting more UK kids um, making it all the way that'd be amazing that really would be all right so we're going to end with three set questions all right okay cool. first one being what is the biggest misconception about yourself what is the biggest misconception about me that I'm a musician <laughs> what like I'll be walking around <laughs> And people ask me, like, am I a rapper? <laughs> you know, like, uh, do I do music? <laughs> so do you I was, Have you ever, like, um, ever dabbled, ever, like, rapped or, like, song? For or? fun, but never, like, mm. on a serious note. But that's definitely something I'm, like, my, I'm passionate about music. So, mm. you know, I love, like, everything about music. Okay, second question. When was the last time you did something for the first time? I tried alligator. Yeah? yeah it was, like, an alligator burger. And it was interesting. An very, alligator burger, Jay. Yeah, Jet. it was very interesting, actually. <laughs> what, down I was in, in too, Miami? Yeah, it was in Miami, actually. And, um, like, what do you have with alligator burger? Like, do the, Trust me, it was it was an interesting, <laughs> like, taste and texture and everything. <laughs> kind of tastes a little bit like chicken. I knew you were going to say that. Everything tastes like but, chicken. But it's like, you remember you're eating an alligator, so it's like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is going to settle well <laughs> in my stomach. So, yeah. You haven't tried it again since? Nah, nah, <laughs> that, that's not for me. That's not my, my delicacy. <laughs> All right, fair enough. And finally, the big one uh, that we ask everybody, what is your motto? Um, yeah, what is my motto? Um, my motto is Yerp, uh, Y-U-R-P. It stands for uh, Your Unlocked Raw Power. It's something that um, me and my best friend kind of, uh, you know, came up with. We just always... You used to say you're up to each other as an affirmation of, um, you know, something to push you for the day, you know, to look into yourself and, like, strive uh, to, for improvement and strive to be the best version of you. And uh, basically we turned that into, like, our own, like, little bra fashion brand and lifestyle wear. And uh, that's something, like, where we've been working on for, like, quite a while now, so it should be coming out soon. But um, it's, like, something that I live by daily, um, you know, just trying to do what I'm doing in my avenue, my platform in football, that's my power is, um, you know, is to be able to, you know, inspire people and motivate people through play. And everyone's different. Everyone has their own different avenues and lifestyles in life. Like for you, you do this kind of thing. And yeah. that's, that's what I would consider like your role power is like being able to um, interact with different people from walks of life and try and, you know, figure out their stories. And 
um, for me, I'm doing what I'm doing, and uh, I just enjoy it, and it's something that you know keeps me going every day. Awesome, man. Well, yeah. Listen, Jay, thank you so much for passing by the Thank you for having me. Bro, yeah. good luck against the Saints on October 1st oh, yeah, as well. I can't wait, man. And Wembley. Hopefully, if, I'm ever in, if I'm ever in Miami, yeah. we hook up. You yes. take me out somewhere, we go party. Yeah, no doubt. I got you, man. <laughs> live, right. live on Sunday. I, 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 I'll show you around. All right, awesome. All right. Nice on, brother. Yeah.